Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, Force here, and today we will be checking out Shadowrun Returns. I'm actually really, really excited to show you guys this game. This is something that I have been highly anticipating. Uh, this is the turn-based RPG that is set in a cyberpunk high fantasy universe. Now Shadowrun has roots that go way back. It's actually a, a franchise that's existed before this game. I guess that's why it's called Shadowrun Returns. Uh, it's being developed by Harebrained Studios and it was actually funded via Kickstarter and they almost reached up to $2 million in funding. So clearly, lots of people really excited about this game as well. So I'm going to be showing you guys a bit of gameplay as well as giving you my general thoughts and impressions on the game. Uh, we're doing a side mission here. So I'm doing this in order to try not to spo spoil too much of the story for you. Because this game is very story driven. Very, very dialogue heavy. We're going to be experiencing a lot of dialogue just here in this video. And this is a more action focused portion of the game so let's just go ahead and get things started uh, the premise of what's going on right now is we're actually trying to save one of our friends we're trying to break into this uh this little facility here and save a friend who is in a bit of trouble so let's go ahead and see what we can do all right so here we go i'm going to talk to this btl clocker he's like the bouncer uh, the orc looks twitchy, his eyes rolling in his head. He scans at the review, looks past to see if there are others, licks his lips, and nods uh, through... <laughs> <laughs> so weird. Nods throughout as if going through some internal checklist. Hoi hoi, how you doing? Good day for a trip, ain't it? So this is like basically like a futuristic drug facility. Um, Coyote, who is our teammate here, and this is the uh, she is the friend of the person we're trying to rescue, leans in and whispers in my ear. This guy's a clocker, trades work time for chips, part salesman, part lookout, probably has a signal device for the guys inside. All right, so the BTL clocker says, you want to go on a ride? You can forget you're an orc for a while, worked for me. All right, let's go ahead and see. We're going to go through the dialogue options because this is what this game is about. Now, this game, in terms of the combat, it's a turn-based combat system, but there is significantly more dialogue and conversation in this game than there is combat. Uh, and I say that after five hours of playing, I would say maybe about four and a half of those hours were reading and dialogue and going throughout the world and only about a half hour worth of combat. It might be closer to four hours and one hour, but it's, uh, it's yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. All right, so you sell BTLs, right? He grins, a lopsided grin. Oh, yeah, Chummer. Oh, yeah, better than life. Definitely better. Dream chips, mind benders, sim stim, sim sense without peak limits, high octane intensity. What kind of rides can I go on? I wonder. We got it all, all of it. We got it all, yeah. What you want to do. You want to do some crime. You want to be bad. We can hook you up. Don't roll that way. Want to be a hero? Be a hero. We got fairy tale Drek Chummer's love. You name it. So weird. Um, and you can slag and frag to your heart's content. That's the real thing, right? Slagging and fragging. Don't matter what a trip as long as there's slagging involved, right? Coyote's eyes are hard, her pupils tight little pinpricks of hate. You do snuff, don't you? <laughs> oh, you do too snuff. Oh, whatever. The clocker looks around, more nervous now. Maybe, yeah, maybe. For the right price, you can feel it. What's it like to die? What's it like to kill? Okay. Let's just, um, how does this place operate? How can I get in? That's a good question. That's the best part. The best part, it's a lab. They test the new stuff here, the hottest dreck. You can place a special order and they'll make it happen. You can, okay, you buy a pass card from the guy at the door. It'll get you in, it'll get you an in, out anytime you want. In and out anytime you want. Then you can buy a beetle and slot right there. Our guys guard you while you're chipping. Safest way, chummer, safest way. Okay, let's go ahead and tell him to let us in. I'll see you around after this, probably see you lots. So that was just one conversation with this one guy. And, um, you know, it's it's a story-driven RPG. It's a dialogue-focused, story-driven RPG in this cyberpunk high fantasy world. The great thing about it, though, is that even if you don't like so, that so much, if you, you're not really that interested in all the dialogue and sort of the world immersion, 
The combat's pretty good as well. It's a turn-based tactical combat system, which we'll be getting to in just a few minutes. Uh, that's similar to sort of XCOM, XCOM Enemy Unknown. Okay, let's talk to this lady, the concerned woman. The woman is probably in her 30s, but hard times have aged her. She looks at you with concern. Don't do it, friends. Don't slot the dreck they're selling. BTLs are killers. There's most of all. Let's see what we have to say to her. Do you have a pass card to get in there? Uh, no, but but Jamal has my son's card. Took it off his. Took it off him when his brain fried. Jamal's down the hall. Don't know if he'll give it up, but that's between you and him. What kind of guards do they have in this place? That's a good question. She looks around, frightened, whispers. They're serious. This place is backed by the Yakuza. Paco, who is my second teammate here out of the team of three that I have. Japanese Mafia, oh man. Uh, how many of them and what kind of firepower? There's a guy on the door, Charlie. He sells the passes to get in. He's not tough, blind in one eye. There's another five or so wandering around. Two of them are bad news, covered in magic symbols. Mean. Coyote says she's amped, ready. Five or six? That's not so bad. We have surprise on our side. Okay, let's see what else we can say to her. We're looking for a kid named Gino, know him? Who doesn't? He's here all the time. Gino's a clocker, trades in time for chips, like their little errand boy. I saw him go in there this morning, hasn't come out, so I imagine he's riding a dream chip. Okay, well, any chip heads inside the lab? All day, yep, all day, all night. And they can be dangerous too. Chip heads, dangerous? Mm, interesting. Once someone's chipped, they can send them any program they want, make them do whatever, turn them into whores, Killers, anything. Sorry for the language. I'm just reading. Okay, gotta go. Gotta go. I gotta get out of here. This lady. She's pretty depressing. Okay, so we, we gotta try to get in. We gotta get ourselves a pass. We can see where we're gonna do that. Oh, you can zoom out pretty far here as well. So we got a couple guys over here. This is Charlie. He's the guy guarding the door. This one over here, Jamal. He's the one who has a pass card. I wonder if we can get one from him. Let's talk to him real quick. Jamal has the look of a longtime chip head. Ooh, emaciated, hollow-eyed, but hungry and desperate. What you looking at? I heard you have a pass card. I hear you have a pass card, give it to me. I want to buy your pass card, Never mind. I hear you have a pass card, let's go with that. You hear right, I got a few. I sell them at a discount. Charlie charges 50 new on form, but I can give you three for 100, okay. So we can pay 100, I can ask him for 75, we'll just pay 100. So I would have to, if I were to buy it off of him, I'd have to pay 150 for the pass card. I can buy this for 100. There you go. That's a, that's a good deal. So we got a pass card. Let's get in here. All right. This is Charlie. Charlie's an orc with an expression of boredom and one milky eye. He drones through his standard patter. Need a pass. 50 new yen each. New yen, is that how you say that? 150 new yen for the lot of you. That'll let you come and go as you please. You can chip in there and we'll keep you safe while you ride. BTL chips are separate cost, last about three hours. Prices vary, buy those inside. Got our passes right here, buddy. Great, have fun. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We, we got our way into the BTL facility. Uh, they think we're doing this to try to buy they think we're doing this to try to buy stuff, but we're not. We're actually trying to break out a friend. A little buggy, sometimes clicking on stuff doesn't work. That's why I just spent about 20 seconds trying to open that door. A couple guys here that we can't actually have conversations with. Anyone you can talk with in the world will have a dialogue box over their head. And we're going through here to the combat. So let's begin. Okay, the entire floor of this tenement has been given over to a chaos of te technology and, is that squalor? Yeah. Across the room, the text is so small. Across the room, a chromed out Decker argues loudly with an armored thug. A Decker is sort of a, a class type in this game that's that can hook into the matrix and basically kind of like a hacker, if you will. Uh, do, 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 do. Abruptly falling silent as they turn towards you. BTL security, the shotgun wielding thug squeaks in panic. <gasps> it's the crew that took out Stevie J's place. I told you it was only a matter of time. Yakuza Decker said, uh, the man with the cyberdeck calmly speaks with a heavily digitized voice. 
You mess with the wrong BTL lab. Oh, ho, oh, ho. <laughs> this is a Yakuza operation. With a push of a button, I can make these tweakers into my own personal killer puppets. You're fragged. That's how he sounds. Coyote, force! Don't attack any of the chip heads. They don't know what they're doing, and you could hurt Gino. No civilian casualties. Got it. That's the plan. Paco, I have a concussion grenade. Better than fragging the tweakers if they get caught in the middle. So concussion grenade to knock them out. And finally, we get to the combat. Now, I have to tell you, this is actually... Uh, this this portion of the game is one of the quickest times I've been able to get to combat normally I mean, I've gone through entire portions that were just dialogue for a good 45 minutes to an hour again Trying to emphasize the dialogue focus. So now we are in combat turn-based tactical combat a similar system to XCOM enemy unknown If you have played that game, let me go through the paces here. We've got three people on our team right now uh, They're they're all different have different abilities and different weapons different things in their inventory as well And I can click on any one of them at any point to decide who I want to use first I'm probably gonna start off with my main character here. My main character is a street samurai, uh, one of the classes that are within this game, and I'm focusing on melee. Now there's a, a few different things that I can do here. I can switch through my various weapons. I've got three of them. There's an unarmed, a, uh, a machete, and then I also have the street sweeper, which is a shotgun. Now with the different weapon types, you also have different attacks. My physical uh, melee attack right there with my fist doesn't have, but this, we've got multiple attack types that we can choose from here for the machete, as well as for the, sh oh no, the shotgun only has one. Must be one of my other guys that has multiple attack types. But down over here, this is where you select your weapon. Uh, you can also do this, which puts your weapon down. That's basically it. It's going to remove your weapon. I don't know if there's a purpose in doing that. I haven't noticed one within my five hours of playtime, but there might be. Because honestly, even after five hours, I've barely scratched the surface of this game, it seems. So I'm going to be... I am going to be focusing on melee. I don't want to engage with these guys, though, because these two right here... Um, these are chip heads, so that's, oh no, that's the BTL operator, so that's someone I do want to fight. So we're going to machete him, and I've got two options that I can choose from. I can go with the Pummel Strike, which does an additional minus one AP, uh, which is going to remove one of their moves for the next turn. It ignores weapon damage, but it's minus 10% to hit, so I would have a smaller chance to hit. I get an 86% chance to hit with that and a 96 with that, so there you go. I lose I lose some chance to hit, but it, I also get rid of some of their AP and uh, ignores some of the weapons HP damage, okay. This other attack here, it's a basic melee attack that adds plus one HP to the weapon's damage. So I believe that is just more damage. So why don't we go with that one here? And then we're gonna attack. Now there's a number of moves per turn, just like XCOM Enemy Unknown. Each of my characters at the moment has two moves per turn. Uh, you can get characters with increased moves, you can cast spells on your characters that'll increase their move. Nothing I have access to at the moment, but those things do exist. So I can do one move here. I can also do two moves, and it'll also end with an attack if I run right up to him like this. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna click on this guy. It'll run up to him, use up my two moves, plus get an attack. So there we go, we did 15 damage, pretty significant damage to that character. So now that now I've got no more moves for him, and I got to do my other guys. So we can do a move plus an attack, or you can do two attacks in a turn. Uh, but right now these guys are out of line of sight, so I'm going to want to do a move plus an attack. So let's go ahead and move her over here. And let's see if I can hit the operator. I've got an 80% chance to hit with this weapon. Let's take a look at my other weapons. That's the fist. Obviously, that's not going to work. Uh, let's check the pistol. 72% chance to hit with the pistol. Uh, the problem is, though, that the shotgun has spread, and that spread is going to uh, do damage to my own character. So I don't want to avoid that, so I'm just going to use the pistol here, even though it's a smaller chance to hit. Let's see if... Okay, here we go. I've got this uh, for increased accuracy by 15%, so that jumps that up there. But it's got a countdown timer of three, so it's going to be, I think, three turns before I could use that special ability again. My other ability is just a single shot. This is a single shot with uh, that increased accuracy. So let's go ahead and out attack with this. Wonderful, we got the hit. We killed one of the enemies. Now my next guy here, what should I do with him? I'm thinking I'm not even going to attack. I just want to set him up. So we're going to do a, a two-turn move and I'm gonna bring him over here. My main goal at the moment is actually to take out this Decker because he's decked in and they've got control here of these chip heads, but if I can kill him, then they're gonna get knocked out of combat temporarily. So I'm gonna move him to here for now 
No attacks for him this turn, just getting him in a position for future attacks. All right, so enemy's turn now. So there, those are the number of enemies that are gonna go. We've got that guy here, the chip head running up and punching my friend. Uh, another chip head running over here. And another chip head running over. And that's an enemy. And that's an enemy over there, casting a spell. Actually got 10 damage through. That really stinks, to be honest with you. And then we've got a, uh, an enemy over here casting spells giving plus dodge to his buddies. Okay, so enemy's turn is done. It is now our turn, we can go for some damage. I can run over to hit that Decker. And yeah, I think that's gonna be my primary object here. Let's see what we got. It's a minus 10 to hit, but it's still 82%, so I think I'm okay with that. So we're gonna go ahead and run up to him. Oh, wow, that didn't even do any damage, just stunned him. That really sucks. Uh, <laughs> let's move this guy up now. And try to get a shot off. Oh, it's only 63% chance to hit. Let's get increased accuracy here. 73, okay. 11 and seven damage. Not quite enough for the kill. I got a 41% chance from here. Maybe if I move her closer, we'll be better. Off. She's actually really low, so I'm a little bit concerned that she might die. This is actually uh, a little, little nerve-wracking because I can't have any of these. If these, if my friends die, then I'm, I think I fail. So the first time I did this, it was fine, but it got a little hairy, and that's why I'm a little concerned right now. Because she might be, yeah, she just got hit. He's helping his friend there. All right, so let's hit this guy now. I should be able to have two attacks on him. The interface can be a bit buggy. Sometimes it literally just doesn't respond. Okay, so we got him, and you're gonna notice there was a minus four stun now to all of these uh, chip heads. So that puts us in a little bit of a better position. Paco could get a couple shots off on this guy, so let's do that. And there we go, got the kill. And now this girl, we need to try to save her, so I'm gonna run her back with one turn. And then with her second turn, this uh, with her second move this turn, I can actually go into her inventory and cast a heal. Uh, now I've got two heal types. One of them is for 10 HP. The other one's for 20. We're going to use the 21. And uh, these inventory items also have a number of uses. So you can see these grenades actually take two uses, but she only has one left. Plus I need a healer. So we're going to do this med kit. We're going to click on her, and that is going to heal her fully up. There we go. Now it's the enemy's turn, and she immediately gets shot. <laughs> So you should notice uh, when I move people to cover, there is a cover system, it's the shield system. Once again, similar to that of XCOM Enemy Unknown, uh, different cover provides you with different levels of protection essentially. And I think I can shut these guys off completely actually. Let me try to run him up and do that. I'm gonna shut this off and we can forcibly end the BTLs which is gonna do damage to these people, but it's gonna knock them out of their little their little mind control state. So there we go. All right, he is all done now. So now it's these guys' turns. I've got my main character. We're gonna, to... actually no, he's got another move still. Holy heck. Um, well, it doesn't look like I can do any damage. Let me see if I can, I can't throw a grenade either. Uh, let me heal him up because he has taken a little bit of damage. So we're gonna heal him up for the turn. Oh, I think I can heal him too. No, not close enough. There we go. Okay, so healed himself up. Now it is time for Force to move in, and we are going to have him use this ability. Run forward. And wow, that was a lot of damage. She's got another move too. There we go. And okay, got a 99% chance today with the pistol, and I, I'm gonna have two attacks here, so we're gonna do that. There's one. And for the second move, is there anyone else that I can hit at the moment? No, there is not. Anything else I can do? No, I could heal her up a little bit, but I guess it's not much of a point. So I'm gonna move her position right now, and that'll be the end of my turn. So now the opponent is going, doing their things, just summoning something there. Oh, that was a lot of damage. Holy heck. Oh no, I 
guy's almost dead. Um, so let's see here. I've got... I've got one big heal, so let me attack with him first, and then he'll heal himself up. Okay, there we go. And then the second turn will heal him. Okay, and then with this guy, let's see what we can do. Uh, I'm gonna use one move to move around the corner. I got a 99% chance to hit with that. So this attack here is two attacks with less chance for critical, may hit adjacent uh, characters. And this one is two attacks, one action. Low critical damage but increases accuracy. So we're probably going to stick with this basic attack here. There we go. And I think I might be able to kill her. Uh, maybe not, we'll see. I'm going to move this guy up. And hopefully I don't hit my own character with this shot, but we'll find out. I'm going to use the shotgun, and we'll go ahead with uh, just the basic attack. 12 damage. Okay, so pretty good damage. Not enough for the kill, though. So let's see what happens this turn. Luckily, he missed. Damage only for 4. Oh, there's 10. Okay. Go for the attack, which gets rid of his minion. And then we will heal him up with this. And then we just have one last guy to kill. So let's take care of business here. Move him up. He's actually out of ammunition with this weapon, so I could use a, a, a one move to re reload it. But I'm gonna just going to switch weapons and hit her with the baseball bat. And then this girl can do a couple shots here. I think that's gonna hit my ally because of the spread. Uh, first shot missed my ally, so we're gonna take that second shot. That one hit my ally. Yeah, we're good, we got this. No problem. Just need a couple more. Shots here. Oh my lord, are you serious? All right, that's, that guy's terrible in melee. Alright, we got a 70. Let's take a look at the pistol here. 87 chance to hit. Okay, what about... Let's go increased accuracy for the first shot. And if this hits, that's that. Okay, so there we go. That was the combat. Uh, now, the characters that I had were pretty basic. There are characters within this game that, again, can cast spells. Uh, you saw an enemy character there who was able to summon minions, things of that nature. Uh, so there's more than just shooting guns and, and attacking with baseball bats and machetes. Uh, but that is all we really got to see in this fight. Because once again, even though I'm five hours in, it's still pretty early in the game. All right, so we have uh, we found his friend. We found, uh, we found her friend here, so we're going to try to... It's, it's being a little bit buggy again. I'm going to try to talk to him. There we go. Okay, so this is Gino. You eject the BTL Gino's been riding. He gasps suddenly, his eyes flutter open. He looks confused, worse than the other chip heads you've seen. His lips are white and chapped, his eyes sunk into his head. There's vomit on his shirt and sweat on his forehead. When he speaks, his words are stuttered. He's burnt. What, what, what the hell? Who slotted me out? Who fraggin' slotted me out? <laughs> Coyote is shaking. She looks horrified. Gino, it's me, Carla. Gino looks at her with glazed eyes and no recognition. Slot me back in, goddammit. This is bullshit. <laughs> I don't want to be here anymore. Slot me back in. He looks around the room angrily, his hands reach for his implants. Coyote grabs his wrist, stops him. Gino, no. Coyote, be careful. Gino wrenches his wrist from Coyote's grasp, and he staggers back, reaches under his shirt, and pulls out a gun. Coyote watches him, horrified, with tears in her eyes. Gino waves it around, blinking wildly. Back off. Just back the hell off. All right, so what are we gonna say to Gino? He's going a little crazy. Take it easy, Gino. We're backing off. He presses his hand to the side of his head, his fingers still on the trigger squints. What the hell is wrong with you people? 
trying to help you. This is the way you help me? Look at this place! Look at me! He looks around the squalor of a room, then glimpses his own reflection in the machinery. Oh god, look at me. Put the gun down, Gino. Come with us. No, you don't. You can't understand what it's like out here. I'm naked, I gotta slot in, get away. He points the gun to Coyote. You're not gonna stop me. I'll freaking kill you first. Gino, no. Oh no, he's... Man, oh man, I'm sorry, Carla. I'm so sorry. Coyote looks to you, tears in her eyes. He was totally zoned. You had no chance. He was beyond help, Coyote. I'm sorry, but he's at rest now. I'm not stopping. Not now, not ever. She looks at Paco, back at you, the angel of death. A real rain is coming to Seattle, and it's gonna wash the scum off the streets. I'm gonna burn every mother fragging BTL shop in the sprawl until they are gone. Every mother fragging one. And that was a portion of Shadowrun Returns. Uh, we took a look at the plethora of dialogue, even in between sections here. It continues the story. This couple of paragraphs is uh, just pushing the story forward. And yeah, that's, th that's what this game is like. Significantly more time is spent experiencing the world, going through dialogue, than there is combat. But you know what? Now, I, I'm not adverse to reading or anything, and but typically I wouldn't think that that would be experience that I, I enjoy, but I'll tell you, this this is uh, this game's really pulled me in. The setting is rather interesting. We've got this, again, cyberpunk high fantasy mix. I'm not going to go any more forward because I don't want to spoil any more of the story for you. Um, I will show you some of the features that we haven't gotten a chance to look at, though. Uh, so we've got a basic quest log essentially with objectives that you have and any mission items that you're carrying uh, with you. Uh, also currency is shown up here. There's a whole character progression system, um, which, yeah, I guess we'll just take a look at that now. So this is my character. When you have other people in your party, you can scroll through them as well. At the moment, it's just me, though. Uh, so we've got some, some stats over here. It shows the number of action points that your character has for combat, hit points, armor, uh, essence, and magic. Essence is uh, part of the slotting system, which we'll be taking a look at in the next portion here when we look at, like, the inventory um, it's basically like an alteration enhancing system for your character. I guess you could consider it like passive bonuses. Uh, basic stats, they're strength, quickness, intelligence, willpower, charisma, and body. Let's take a look at those a little bit in detail though. As you can see, I am focused on strength and body. Those are my two highest pointed stats here. I've uh, been primarily focusing on strength though because that is close quarters melee combat. And that's what, that's what I'm building this character to be. So here's the system. Uh, we'll, break, we'll go through this piece by piece. So body, this determines your resistance to physical damage, increases chance to take reduced damage from attacks. Uh, for every point of body, hit points are increased by 10. Then there is quickness. I could just scroll through this, but I'm gonna use this, uh, this quick little button stuff up here. Strength, used to calculate the chance to hit with melee or throwing weapons, also determines how far a grenade can be thrown. Intelligence is used in decking or rigging to calculate the chance to hit with computer programs or drones, also used to reduce the chance to be hit by enemy programs in the matrix. Willpower is used to calculate the chance to hit with magical attacks, also used to reduce the chance to be hit by animal enemy magical attacks. And Charisma is used to calculate the chance to control spirits, increases the chance to hit while with conjuring spells, uh, unlocks etiquettes that affect conversation. So, these are the different stats. You, just by playing the game, completing quests and stuff, you get these karma points to use on these stats. And the way it works is, so if I wanted to unlock the next point in body, I need to spend six of my karma points. Now, the, the, something that's really interesting about this system, let me go to the body. Again, you can see there are these base stats, but there's also, they go further in depth. So under quickness, uh, you can increase the range combat, then you can focus on pistol, S SMG, shotgun, and rifle, uh, as well as dodge and strength. Uh, you increase base strength, but then you can also increase close combat, which will allow you to increase melee weapons, unarmed and throwing weapons, and then intelligence, uh, biotech, and then focus on decking, uh, ESP control, drone control, drone combat. So 
beyond the basic stats of the body, quickness, strength, intelligence, willpower, and charisma, there's further, uh, there's further specification. So we'll go specifically into one that I'm focused on, which is body. And it's an interesting system because you have to increase in tiers. So I need to increase the strength tier in order to get this next portion, as an example. So I need to spend six points to push this tier along that will allow me to increase further. So for example, I can't get this number six right here until I upgrade this up here. And that tier goes all the way down within the strength column, within the strength section. That's how that tier system progresses. It's not, it's not for every single one, like I don't need to increase body to increase quickness, but for quickness, I would need to increase this before I can increase this, as an example. So let me spend some of my points. I've got 12 karma points right now. Uh, we're going to go to strength, which is my primary focus. And I want to increase uh, my melee weapons are my main focus right now. So let's go ahead and get this cleave, which is an additional ability now for my melee attacks with this character. But if I want to go any further, again, I'm going to need to spend this. So we're going to spend those points. It will increase my strength, which will give me those base uh, base increases and now i can specify uh, now i can specialize further into melee weapons in close combat as soon as i get additional karma so let's go ahead and confirm that it's an interesting it's definitely an interesting system um yeah i guess that's all there is to say about it so that is that and let's now move into the inventory and cyberware which are those passive bonuses again i've been playing for five hours i only have one increase into my cyberware i mean I have barely scratched the surface of this game, and I'm only playing with one character. There's multiple classes in this game. Uh, so in the inventory, we get some basic information. His basic weapons are slotted. I've got the Street Sweeper, which is a shotgun, as well as the machete. You can have various outfits, with, which give you various benefits. The one that I have right now uh, gets me plus three HP. Um, and then there's items that you have in your inventory. Now. What we can do here in Cyberware, I've got one benefit in my left arm, and this it does, I don't know why it doesn't say it as I'm clicking on it, but I believe this one increased my HP. Uh, so you can get these little implants here, which will increase the various things, uh, give you various passive bonuses. And I can't actually increase, I've got a base inventory, but I can only get to it in the special location. Let me see if I could quickly run there without getting any more of the story stuff. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna sk just skip this. Okay, let me tell her, I'm gonna get out of here. I'm trying to avoid this story stuff. I wanna see, there's a special area. This is basically like the central hub from what I've seen so far. This is like the base of operations. And down over here, I can go through this little secret passage, which will get me to some of these vendors. So here's the doctor vendor, and she is the one who sells me the cyberware. I don't even, I'm trying to skip this. Okay, here we go. So I'd like to look at your cyberware. So here's the, all the various cyberware. Uh, you can get implant for my eyes. This would add 3% hit. Could get a data jack, which would... Um, I didn't think that I could get that with this guy. Okay, get a data jack, which uh, requirement for riggers and deckers. I could get this uh, cyber legs, which would give me an HP bonus. That's actually really good. I think I'd like to get those. Yeah, let me, let me install that now. And I could get this arm bonus. We put that right there. Oh no, I can't get both of those. Forget that. Uh, let me get the legs plus H8, plus eight HP and plus one quickness. And I can get that on one of my legs. Let me do that on the left leg actually. Okay, we're gonna install this. It's gonna spend 2000. It's also gonna use up some of our essence. Essence, you, you have a maximum amount of essence and uh, each one of these installs uses up essence. You can't use it all, I think you have to have at least one essence remaining. Okay, so there we go. That is that, and now I've got the implant on my leg. So now I've got extra um, extra HP or whatever. Let's go back over there just to take a look at that. So there we go, there's the implant on our leg. Again, it doesn't tell me what it is here. Um, and down over here, there's also vendors for weapons and magical spells, like this guy over here, I think he sells the magic spells and stuff, which my character can't really use, but all different sorts of things here. So yeah, those are the vendors. Um, game definitely feels a little unpolished in certain areas. A great example is, you know, this right here, like not being able to see what this stuff is when I click on it, should that information not be up there. 
And um, you also have to, to get to your inventory, you can't do it anywhere. You've got the inventory of stuff that you have on your character, but then there's also your stash, which is located over here. And in the stash, you've got any backup stuff that you have. So I've got, in my stash, I've got a different outfit here, which I could switch. This is my basic outfit. I want my advanced one. And then I've got these different things. I've got extra grenades and stuff like that, extra med kits. There you go. Okay. So, yeah, I, that's, I guess that'll do it. Uh, <laughs> like this game, there's definitely a lot to it. And uh, even though it's got this dialogue focus, which you know, typically might not be my thing. I've really liked this world. I like the aesthetic of it. I like the setting. I like the story that's being told. And that's a good thing, because if I didn't like the story, I'd be bored to tears, because there's a lot of story in this game. I'm gonna quickly jump out right now, though. I wanna exit to the main menu, because I do wanna just show you briefly, as we wrap things up here, uh, go to a new game. And uh, also a ton of room for modding in this game. I guess people are going to be able to make entire levels and quests and things of that nature. So it looks like it's going to be pretty mod friendly. Um, let me launch a new campaign though, because I just want to show you character creation. So you can choose from the different gender, male and female. Let's just make a female one for the sake of this. And then there's the different races, human, elf, dwarf, orc, and troll. They've got their different benefits. Uh, trolls increase body and strength, and then you can, so it shows the maximum stats. Uh, orcs plus one body, all dwarfs plus one willpower, elves plus one charisma, humans plus one to karma to start the game. That's your skill point system. Uh, so let's go with a dwarf, it's plus one willpower, and then there's the different classes. There's the street samurai, the mage, and you're gonna notice it tells you the key attributes for each one of these as well, as well as the key skills. Uh, so mages, willpower, decker, intelligence, shaman, and there's a little bit of brief description of all these different classes. Game is pretty cool, I have to say. I, I, I'm definitely really enjoying it. After five, closer to six hours now of playing this game, uh, definitely excited to keep playing through it. Uh, it's just, it's, it's a unique setting. I like the combat, even though it doesn't happen a lot. And the story that's being told, like I mentioned earlier, is interesting to me. So there you go, this has been a look at Shadow Run Returns. Thanks so much for joining me in this checkout video. This is gonna be available later today for $19.99. If you're interested in picking it up, I would suggest it if you like what you've seen so far. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. And as always, keep watching and keep owning.